Hey guys, we are back for Insecure Season 4, Episode 5. I'll have the title in the description. I hope everybody's well. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to you, girl. Let's get into this. Okay, so y'all know last week was the black, the black party, <laughs> the black party, and everything went really well as far as the black party is concerned. Um, besides that little uh, random uh, somebody got a gun thing and everybody scattered, which it didn't really seem like somebody had a gun. But as far as the block party was concerned, everything went down smoothly. Now, that whole yin-yang with Molly and Issa went down, and they almost got it, went into fisticus, <laughs> and almost got down like that, and, you know, oh, well. And, again, a lot of people were Team Issa. Some people were Team Molly, but most people that I've read and talked to were Team uh, Issa in this um in this argument, this act, this just this argument and the timing of it because this was Issa's big thing that she's been working on for I don't know how long, and Molly just picked it was it's a place and a time for everything. So, yeah, and again I'm gonna go over the fact that the reason why Molly is mad is because she feels like Issa went behind her back to get help from her man um, Andrew as far as getting um, Vince Staple for her headliner because she lost her original headliner, Schoolboy Q, because he backed out the last minute and Issa was desperate. So she reached out to Nathan, who's her ex-boo, and, you know, that's Andrew's roommate, and they made it happen and helps her out, and then Molly didn't find out until the block party, and then she just, that's where it all stemmed. Well, it was more it was more to it than that, but that was the straw that broke the camel's back, and that's why Molly stepped to her like that on the day of the um, block party. Okay, so this episode starts off, Issa is in bed, it's the night, the next morning after the block party, and she's just laying there, just playing, replaying stuff in her head, you know, she's just hearing Molly's voice calling her selfish, and all this other stuff, and you know, like, when your best friend tells you stuff like that, like, it's not like any other person telling you something like that. Like, like damn, that's how you feel. Tell me how you really feel <laughs> type of thing. So, you know, she's hurt and she's upset, which she has every right to be. And, um, yeah, so then she goes on to her laptop and she sees that she's getting pretty much nothing but positive uh, feedback as far as the black party people are asking, like, Oh, about the vendors, like who had the, this food, um, how you get this artist there, who was this artist, and everybody just seemed really engaged in it and to seem a, to had a very good time, especially in the community and the area of Inglewood and Cali. So as far as the event goes, it went it, it all positivity, you know, but she can't even focus on this positivity because she's on outs with you know her boo Molly, so. She's just like, huh, so she's not even really paying much mind to it. And then she's going over her, um, oh, and homegirl with the YouTube channel talking about some cocoa butter and, who she said, cocoa butter and violence. What her name, Sharon, I think Sharon on the scene, homegirl who got this whole YouTube channel acting like she is really fake until you make it a news anchor lady. And that's what her take on the thing. I'm like, girl, why you ain't talk about the positivity? Don't be sitting there and just negatively uh, saying stuff. It wasn't even that deep. Wasn't no real violence going on at that black party. But anyway, so from there, what else happened? So she's checking her um, uh, voicemails. Her brother called her to check on her. Like, hey, you cool after that stuff happened with Molly? Everybody checking on her. Kelly checking on her. Ch Kelly is um, there with um, Tiffany and Derek's baby because apparently they don't. Who knows? They're probably at work and Tiffany probably is on it be bothered with that baby at the moment. So she's sitting there with the baby, but she's still checking in on Issa. Everybody checking in on Issa, make sure she cool. And she's just not answering and not really responding to anybody at this point because she just don't feel like talking. So from there, Issa goes and she has a, you know, conversation with Mirror, her reflection, um, Issa. And she was just like, you know, saying how, you know, she fucked up. She's like, what? She's like, no, Molly fucked up and she got you fucked up for, you know, pulling how she pulled that. Then her reflection's like, oh, but are you going to reach out to her? And then Molly was, I mean, then Issa's like, no, I'm not going to reach out to her because I'm the one that always reaches out and, you know, extends the olive branch and everything. 
So I'm just going to wait. And then she's like, well, what you going to do until then? So she does her self-care Sunday, cleans up her house, you know, gets everything in order within her space to make her feel better. So that was good. So after that, um, what she do? She is, oh yeah, and this is pretty much, this whole episode is pretty much a filler episode. Doesn't nothing uh, definitive happen um, in this episode, but I, it's like the middle of the season because we're actually getting 10 episodes this time. So it kind of usually always happens towards the middle of the episode. The middle of the season is always a filler and this happens to be the episode, but it was entertaining nonetheless. Um, so she is in the supermarket getting some wine and whatnot. And this pregnant girl, um, his Hispanic chick, she walking around very fully pregnant. She got her little um, basket and she going around asking everybody, um, can you please help me out? I just got a few things. Can you help me out? First, I was just, I thought she was just asking, can she have cut somebody in line because she just needs to get out of there? But no, she was asking people to buy her groceries first. Issa was trying to act like, because Issa was further in front of the line and she saw her homegirl coming from the back asking folks and Issa was looking at her reflection her reflection was like hell no nah. but then she ended up saying I got you girl come on and then she's like oh thank you so much it's a blessing so you know that is kind that is definitely out of Issa's character to do um that but she went ahead and tried to help her out homegirl had diapers and a few other essentials or whatnot and Issa even though she, her heart was in a good place she didn't afford all the stuff it was like ended up being a hundred or something I'm like damn what the fuck she have so she couldn't even um, buy homegirl stuff. And then the girl was like, because she swiped it. He's like, decline, decline again. The girl was like, don't worry, it's okay. She was like, now nah, it's just getting sad. I'm like, bitch, how you going to say now nah, it's getting sad? You the one who fucking nine months pregnant about to pop a baby out and you ain't got a dollar to your name to buy or pots of piss in or nothing right now. Girl, you, so, and then she's talking about something. Oh, you put this into perspective for me. And she going to walk away. I'm like, bitch, you try to help people. This is a whole. This whole episode was like you try to help folks and fuck them. <laughs> That's what I'm just saying. But anyway, we'll get to all of that. So she just like, oh, uh, Issa. The girl walks away and Issa was like, well, I just want my wine. She was like, she need all this stuff anyway. The baby ain't even here yet. Exactly, cause she had diapers and stuff. I'm like, do you have an infant at home already? Why do you need diapers at this moment in time where the baby ain't even here? And where's your baby father or your family to help you while you asking strangers in a fucking store? Anyway, I mean, I know it's just for comedy relief, but I'm sure that, that is some real shit that happens, and I'll be totally embarrassed to ask that, but I mean, whatever. And again, can't you get some government uh, assistance or something? Anyway, it's not that deep. Um, so from there, we see, uh, oh shoot, I forgot to, I'm going to backtrack real quick. Before she goes to the market, Nathan calls her and checks on her, and he was like, are you cool? Um, I know stuff towards the end, you know, got kind of heated, but she was like, yeah, I'm so sorry about that or whatnot. I didn't mean to bring you back in my life like that. And, um, I hope you don't think that I used you cause you know what Molly said to her kind of is like fucking with her. And she, he was like, no, nah, I don't think you used me. He was like, you were in a bind and you were in trouble and I wanted to help. So I don't feel Issa in this instance should feel at all bad about, um, him helping her and getting her out. Of, and then that's what Andrew wanted to do was help her. Like, I don't, whatever, when it comes to that. So they're good. And then, you know, he was at work at the barbershop and he just said he'd been real busy and they gonna get together soon and all that. And that was that. Then she went to the market. And then after that, she goes and what happened? Oh, she's right. She's driving from the market with her wine. She see an old man trying to get the bus. And, you know, I've seen this a million times in Chicago because CTA, some CTA bus drivers, Chicago pub, uh, public transit, give no fuck. I've seen old ass people trying to go after the bus in the dead of winter and the bus will just keep going if you are not at that bus stop. I've seen it a million times. Or if you at the light and and they see that you about to cross the street and try to get the bus, you're like, hey, don't get no fuck. So this old man running down the street like, hey, I'm trying to get this bus. And the bus just left. So Issa was like... Her mirror self's like, girl, don't do it, don't do it. But Issa pulls over and she offers this man a ride. And she's like, hey, where you going? He was like, um, I don't play that Uber stuff because, you know, she does drive. She's like, oh, I do drive Uber, but not right now. I'm just doing this, you know, I, shit, the kind of stuff in my heart. Do you need a ride or not? And he was like, don't be trying no funny stuff. I don't hit a woman, but I slap a bitch. Like, it was, it was just ridiculous. And you can tell that 
uh, Issa, the reason that she's doing these things for these people or attempting to do things for people is, I guess she's just trying to, I, I don't know, prove to herself that she's not selfish or, you know, just feel like she wants some good karma to come back or something. It's like she has something to prove to herself because anybody's seeing her do this stuff. <laughs> So she driving the man and she's like, where you going? And you know, he one of them old school men like, oh, I'm not, conspiracy theory, like, oh, I'm not going to tell you to put it in your phone because it's going to tell the government where I'm going. You know, stuff like that as far as his location and where he's going and stuff. So he's like, just drive down the street. Then he's talking about it's too hot. It's too cold, too cold, too hot, too hot. And then I would have been like, you know what, just get out of my car because I ain't got time for this. <laughs> um, but, you know, she just struggles through it. And then they talk in and he is just a crazy old man. Um, and they're just talking about random stuff. And then he goes and starts talking about Black Planet. She's like, what, you had a Black Planet page? She got me Black Planet. And then Solange bought it like recently. And um, I had went back on there because Solange bought it um, at, right at the end of... Uh, I think right at the end of Black History um, uh, she bought Black Planet and tried to revive it again and she released all her stuff. This ain't got shit to do with Insecure, y'all, but I was just talking about Black Planet real quick. And I went back on and I was like, oh shit, Black Planet is back. And then it don't seem like it really is, though. Oh well. Well, I'll come back to it. I'll keep y'all posted. But anyway, for all of those Black Planet people who want to know. But he was like, no, not Black Planet. The, um... The internet stuff. He's talking about some used to be a club called Black Planet. And then he started talking about his old friends and how they used to all was cool. And then one went off and some of them went to jail. One died and then the rest of them got one got hooked on crack. And he don't know what the other ones is. So, like, that's just how his friend group broke up. And it was just random talking of an old man. And, you know, just talking about how friend groups can break up. I don't know. She didn't ask him all that. Then he says he has to pee. So, she pulls over to... Uh, uh, laundry mat or whatever. Let him go to the bathroom. And she was like, she should just drive off. And I'm like, I would have drove off because I'm like, this man want to take bathroom stops to all this stuff. And she been driving him for a while. I would have caught his ass up to the bus and let him out. Because, girl, I'm like, it's a damn girl. Don't you got other stuff to do? But she just determined to do this good deed. So she just followed it through. He come out with a fun dip. Y'all ain't seen a fun dip in a minute. Them little candy things. It was good. Uh, brought your teeth out, but they delicious. <laughs> um, so then she finally drive him. Where he going? And then he pull out a um, picture or whatnot of a house. And then he happens to be in front of that house. And he was like, thank you very much, Isis. I appreciate it. And he gets out the car. And then he's like, shit, it's like 2.40 something. And she apparently she has somewhere to be. So because she's asking, like, well, are we almost there yet? Because I got somewhere to be. So, And then, lo and behold, the house this man is pulling up to is, I don't know, I guess his son's house. Maybe it's his old house he left went and went to go get a pack of cigarettes and never came back. But... Yeah, so it was a funny little comic relief, her driving that little old man. So that was that. So she was what she was late to get into was she's going to a sip and paint. You know, I have not yet to do one of these things that look real fun. You know, where you get together with your girlfriends and you bring some liquor and y'all paint something, a simple little thing. And, you know, it's just it's nice and relaxing. So, but I'm like, you doing that alone? This seems good to go do that alone. So she goes and she finds a group of... um other uh women and she sits down whom one whom has to uh one one whom is why can't i talk is the beautiful miss kyla pratt um and they are part of like it's her and her three girlfriends or two girlfriends and they're in town because she's a, her little bachelorette thing so they just sit in and they didn't bring no liquor and she was just like, oh, she got that big old jug of, was it Carlo Rossi or whatever, jug of wine, uh, Issa does. And she was like, well, I ain't going to do this all by myself. That cheap ass wine, y'all, you'd be sick drinking that stuff. But hey, when you ain't got that much money, it come through for the, for the little, for the little, little, uh, little something. But you're going to be sick the next day. But yeah, so she's like, I split it with y'all. So she's splitting it with them and they just talking and she's like, oh, where y'all from? I think they say they're from D.C. And, you know, she's like, I'm here because, you know, it's my bachelorette and all this and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, just kiki and haha. And you can tell that Issa misses that. Like, I mean, I know it ain't <clears throat> how she is with her friends. She's like, damn, may not probably may not be like that since her and Molly are into it. Like, damn, how's our friendship going to be? And Tiffany got a baby and shit. So it's like, damn, how's shit going to be? Probably. So you can tell that, like, Issa just has a lot of stuff on her mind. And that's why she's not responding to anybody anyway. So from there, they have a nice little time talking, and then um, they leave from the sip and paint, 
And they're like, actually, we're about to just go right up on the corner and get some some more to drink if you want to come with us. And then, you know, Issa's near herself. It's like, girl, go ahead. Go have, you know, decompress. And she's like, first she's like, nah. And then she's like, okay. But first she checks her phone. Kelly has been calling her constantly. And she left her voicemail. She texted like, I'm trying to get a hold of you. Why are you answering the phone? And she's still not responding to anybody. The only person that she's talked to in her life is Nathan. And that was earlier. So she goes with them, and then it looked like they having drink drinks. I'm like, y'all going to be sick as hell having some good liquor. And then that wine, they're going to be sick. But, I mean, you know, the bachelorette, and, you know, you just do what you do and have some good kicks and giggles with your girlfriends. So they talking, and they ask, uh, ends up asking Issa what she does. And <clears throat> she says, well, she starts, like, it's kind of hard to explain. She's like, girl, go ahead and explain it. So she kind of starts explaining what she does, like, events. She's like, are you event planning and you know, this and blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, so you're a planner? Are you this? And she's like, actually, so she finally put a title on actually what she does, which is, what she say she do? A cultural curator. I said, like, okay, Issa, that sounds cute. You can put that on some business cards and everything. So there you go. So they was like, okay, so you like the plug, huh? And she's like, yeah, you know. So she was kind of like, you know, floss. She's like, I just, re- just did a whole thing with, um, who is it? Fence staple and everything, and you know, I had I just threw some, you know, yes, yesterday and shit. So that all shit, you know, and then um, so it just seemed like everything's going good and everything, and they keep hearing ha ha. And then um, one of the girls is like, I gotta use the bathroom, and Issa's like, okay, cool, I gotta go too, so let's go to the bathroom. So they talking, and the girl asking her like, oh, where can I find some men at? Where can we find the men at and all that? And she Issa just gonna run down while they both using the bathroom. And then all of a sudden, she's talking uh, to the girl, I remember her name. And she was like, oh, so she asked her something. And then it got quiet. I thought the girl had passed out, died or something, y'all. I just think the worst. Well, it wasn't nothing good. So she looking, and girl, she looked on the thing. She's like, you fall in there? Her, you don't see her feet or nothing. So she come out of the restroom and everything. They have left. And then on the table or on the side is a scavenger hunt that says to dine and dash, befriend a stranger, drink wine. So all the stuff that they were doing with her, and then it was double points if you do them all in one big thing. So they have been playing Issa, trying to fake befriending her and everything for some fucking scavenger hunt. Now, that's fucking grimy as shit. I mean, I've never done one of them. I ain't never done no scavenger hunt like that where it just tell you to fuck somebody over. I remember we were in um, we were in uh, New Orleans, and one of these people ran up on me and my husband, and they were like, "Oh, we're doing a scavenger hunt. We gotta take a picture with somebody in a dress. I have to have a dress on, so they had to take a picture with me, and it had something else. I fulfilled two of their things, and I was just like, "Okay, now nah, we about to leave. I don't, I don't know y'all. I trust y'all. I don't trust folks." But you know, this is other black girls. She didn't think they was gonna do that. <laughs> now the black people won't mess you up, but we mess over our own people all the time. But that was messed up, especially for how Issa was feeling. Plus, Issa ain't got no damn money, so she looked at that bill, and shit, all the next thing we know, Issa is riding off, because she ain't got no money to pay for that shit. So, from there, and I'm like, Issa, did you have enough to pay for your food? Probably, but yeah, so, and she driving off, and then she looking, and then she see the girls, and she like, jump about her car with a, um, with the painting from the paint sip, bust home girl over the head, and she was like, yeah, bitch, welcome to LA. And then it turns out that's just her thinking of the things that she would do to them, because she actually does see them up the up the road, and she don't do shit. And I was like, yeah, because if you, you don't know, if you pull up on them, it's three against one. They probably whoop your ass. So I'm just saying, you don't know. So just, you know, bitches, is, if, if they cool enough for doing that, you don't know what they would do. So I'd be like, I would have left it too, and you, Ran out on check anyway as well, so fuck it. So from there, we see Issa. Um, where uh, where am I at? Okay. Hold on, y'all. Got to check my notes. Got to check my notes. Want to make sure I keep y'all informed of everything that happened. So she called somebody and she was like, "Hey, you at home? Are you busy? Can I come over?" And I was like, yeah, "She better not be going to see Nathan." So she did. She walks up to a house. I'm like, oh, it's her mama's house. So she not going to the door. It's her mama. And, you know, sometimes you just got to go home and just, like, decompress. And then she was like, 
you why you invite me to your um you know her mama is played by the beautiful again and lovely Wendy Raquel Robinson and um or Regina off of uh Steve Harvey show if y'all know from there and um yeah so she was like why you invite me to your black party she's like cuz mama you told me you don't like crowds of black people <laughs> sound like me but she's like i don't like cross people but sound like me i don't like cross people either and social distancing is not hard for me because i don't like being around a whole bunch of people like that and she's like yeah it just make me itch i feel the same way girl so they just talking she was like well then she mentions like well i'll be sure i won't have no crowds at the next she's like oh the next one so it went well yeah she's like yeah it went really good she's like that's great and then they talking and then she can just see that something is pressing on Issa. And then she's like, you want some gumbo or something? She's like, no, nah, ma. And then she was just like, come here. Just come here. She's like, what? She's like, just come here. And then she give her a hug. And Issa just break down and starts crying because Issa just feels so full. Like sometimes you just need a hug. And you just, you know, mama know. Mama know. Mama knew. So she gave her a hug. And then they go off to the couch to sit down and just start talking. And, you know, they just have a heart to heart. And then her mother tells her, like, you know, she's proud of her. And, you know, she's always, she's admi she admires her for the things that she's like, um, cause Issa said that she overheard her one time talking to her aunt saying that Issa always has her hands in too many pots. She was like, I didn't mean it like that. She's like, I meant that you have so many things that you do that you are actually really good at. And she's like, I always admire that about you. And she was like, and then she also went and told Issa, like, you're probably just going through, changing through another season in life because it's just probably just growing pains. You know, sometimes it just happens. She's like, growing pains. And she's like, I'm already 30, you know, or whatever. She was like, at 30, you were sitting there. You had two kids and a house and you was married. She was like, I never want y'all. I didn't think I could have kids. She was like, well, that's earth shattering. She was like, I did. She's like, but y'all are the best things that ever happened to, in my life. And she's like, you just never know what you have to go through and stuff. And you just got changed with your life. And that's just how it is and everything. So it was a nice, beautiful talk, you know, a mother-daughter talk. It was sweet. Then, you know, she even asked, um, Issa went and asked her how her and her man's is doing. She was like, oh, he is treating her well. You know, your mama get a man. Don't know how to act. She's like, it seemed like she's having a good space with her. Uh, I, but she asked her, was they getting married? She's like, no. Nah. But that's how some old folks be after one marriage, two marriages. Like, that's enough. Ain't nobody got time <laughs> to be keep marrying. And you just have your companion and that's it. And that's perfectly fine. Because everybody, marriage ain't for everybody. Especially if you already did like once, twice, three times. Like, how many times you gonna do this? Just... Be cool with who you cool with, and that's cool. So, yeah, so she ends up, you know, just leaving her mom's house with better perspective and feeling better. So she finds, she leaves her mom's house and finally answers the phone for when Kelly called. Kelly's so stupid. <laughs> Kelly calls her and say, uh, this is Kelly, man, Sue's called. Like, Kelly, you called me. She's like, well, yeah, bitch, you treat me like uh, my biological father or something. And it's, you know, Kelly always for the shits and giggles. And she was just like, are you, um, are you okay? She's like, yeah. She's like, have you talked to Molly yet? And she was like, nah, I ain't talked to Molly. Um, I ain't called Molly. Why are you going to call Molly? Because she ain't called me. She's like, are y'all going to keep this up? How long are you going to keep this up? I'm like, damn, this shit just happened. Can somebody breathe real quick? So she was like, she's just telling her like, so if y'all don't get this together, what, is that just it? You know, but like Issa don't really know. She's just still confused. It's still really fresh. You know, I mean more than like. It hadn't even been 24 hours, you know? So she was just, and then Kelly was just like, look, when me and Tiffany got into it, because, you know, when they had that big blow up um, or whatever, she was like, we almost let it last so long that we couldn't come back from it. And don't let it get that way. Like, maybe y'all just need to sit down and talk to each other. She was just trying to tell her, you know, so don't give up on your friendship like that because I almost completely lost mine. For letting for um waiting too long like we almost didn't come back so she was just telling her dad and then you know she was like all right you know and then Issa was going saying like are you calling molly with this same energy she's like yeah i've been calling her ass too constantly but she's not answering the phone so it's you know kelly just trying to be the mediator and like look y'all let's just squash this or at least talk about it like grown people and not just avoid it but i understand that but i feel also that they need to um Take a minute, just take a moment to just chill out and it just happens. Sometimes people just need to calm down. It takes me a little bit more than 24 hours. I can get over some shit. But it's gonna take me more than 20, less than 24 hours now. I don't get over shit that quick. So at least she got she talked to uh to Kelly and that was that. So she goes back home. She goes back home. 
changes into her just flop stuff. I don't know who these people are to go out and have a whole day. I know this ain't got shit to do with nothing, but you go out and you be outside, smelling like outside, changes to some clean clothes and just sit in your house. I feel like that's gross. But it ain't got nothing to do with that. Nothing. When I come to my house, I got to take a shower, especially now. But I got to take a shower. But I did this before all this other shit going down. And then I put on some clothes and chill in the house. So she chilling. And then she goes smoke a little weed. And then she goes back to, you know, all those comments and stuff. The people asking her questions about the black party and things pertaining to the black party. She goes and after she smoke a little weed, feel a little better, dance around the house. She starts answering the comments, and she tells, like, some people, like, ooh, who was that first performer? Because, I mean, that's her whole thing is to create exposure. People are like, who was that that had this one food? And she's just, like, plugging and adding the people who these people were asking about. And then another person was like, man, where can I find more stuff like this? Because I really enjoy myself, and especially in Inglewood. Where can I, when something else like this is going to happen? And then she goes on to say to that person, like, I got you. Coming soon. So she's I just let put it out there. She didn't put it out there now, so people going to be on her. She's going to have another event coming soon where she uh, does something similar or whatever the, for the people. Yeah. So <laughs> that's nice. And it's good, and I feel like that's a good thing. I mean, she's creating her own her own lane. She's making her own lane and doing her own thing, and I think that's awesome. And it's like from a bad business standpoint, it's like really cool. I admire that about her too, like that she, cause you know she's done a lot of fuck shit and been a lot in a lot of shit. But it seems like she's still, even though all this crazy shit going on, she's finding her way in a business standpoint. She's finding her way, so that's good. I don't know how far she gonna get without Condola. She probably needs to get another connect like that if her Condola ain't gonna be cool. But still, she, she, I'm sure she made a lot of connects while this and through the whole thing. Her um intern assistant, whatever, was calling her and texting her about stuff too, pertaining to you know the black party now that. So from there, she goes and look in the fridge after she done responding to comments. And she just, you know, had a little bit positive attitude because, like, even Nathan told her, like, no matter what happens between you and Molly and all this shit at the end, you should still be really proud of what you were able to pull off. And that's what everybody's telling her. Like, don't let that completely muddle and take away that shine and all your hard work, girl, because you pulled that shit off and don't let nobody take that from you. I know you're feeling a little down, but congratulate yourself. Take a minute to really be like I did that shit you know <laughs> so that's what he was telling her too and he's a good dude I mean I know he got his own problems but hopefully her and um whatever uh Nathan might you know get get back up but then we still don't know what's going on with Lawrence this is the second episode we ain't seen Nana Lawrence we ain't really seen any of the other characters really this episode but Lawrence you know he ain't come to her block party I'm like Zang, you act like Maybe Condola would have been there. But it's a big-ass black party. You could have still came and supported Issa. what she do to you? Nothing. But anyway, I digress. So, Issa hungry. She's looking at her refrigerator. And then she's like, mm, damn. So, she goes to get some Indi uh, some Ethiopian food. Delicious. I love me some Ethiopian food. And I think it's the same. And then she's about to go in. And she sees Molly sitting there at the counter. I'm like, damn. Small motherfucking world. And... Great minds thinking like, I don't know. <laughs> they both hungry and fat for some Ethiopian food. But I think that's the, the joint, like, all the way in season one that we originally saw them at that they love to go to and they go to a lot together to get food. So it makes sense that that's their spot. And Issa, she just stood outside the door. She, you know, she was hungry and shit. And she was like, damn. And she's just, like, kind of debating in her mind, like, should she go in and say something and talk to her, speak to her, or should she not... Issa's still not ready because she just turned around and got back in her car and drove away. Which I can understand. Like I said, it was like been less than 24 hours. But yeah, y'all. That was it. That was Insecure. I'm pretty sure we're going to get back right on track after this episode uh, for next week. I didn't look at the previews for next week, so that's why I'm not speaking on it. Um, but yeah, that's it. I hope y'all enjoyed my review. Don't forget, again, to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see y'all later. Be well, be blessed, stay safe, wash your hands. Love you, love you, love you. Peace. Bye.